Hello, I'm Rene. Welcome to this tip and trick. For this video I will assume that you've never scanned before. The steps you will see for setting up a first scan are one-time only steps. After these are set, and to your satisfaction, you will only have to use the menu for scanning and nothing more. Before you can start scanning, there are a few minor things to do. Be sure your scanner is connected to your computer, that the scanner is turned on, and that the image you want to scan lies on the scanner. I have a black and white image on the scanner that I want to vectorize. Next, check what your scanner settings are. To do this, select the menu File Settings, File Settings, and the tab Miscellaneous. Under the heading Twain, you will find your scan settings. Default, this is set to Lethals. If this for any reason is not working, you can select one of the other options from this list. I myself have it always on WIA. This is by far the simplest scanner interface with only the options you really need. If you use anything else than WIA, the next thing you want to do is select the scanner you want to use. So close this dialog and select File, Scan, which falls off the video but it is just below Settings and then you get scan. Select source. If you are using WIA, like me, the only thing you will see is a little flash of a small dialog or nothing at all. If you are using one of the other options, you will get a dialog in which you have to select the scanner of your choice. In that dialog, select the scanner you want to use and press the button select. If you only have one scanner installed, just select that one and press the button select also. When this is done, which by the way you only have to do once, select the menu File, Scan, Acquire. So, File, Scan, which also falls off the video, and then Acquire. If you're not using WIA like me, the dialog that pops up will look different than yours. That dialog, your dialog, is the scanner's dialog, or better said, the Twain dialog, that communicates with your scanner. But don't worry, the basics are the same for every scanner dialog. I have a black and white image on the scanner, which I want to scan in black and white. So I will look for black and white or monogram, or sorry, monogram, and select that option. For the English people, this is a Dutch Windows, and a zwart wit photo of text means black and white photograph or text. When you use uh, WIA on your uh, system and on an English Windows, it will have uh, English text, so don't worry. The next thing you will have to look for in your scanner dialog is the resolution or DPI. For black and white images, scanning using about 600 DPI is a good choice. So find the resolution settings in your scan dialog and enter 600 dpi's. In WIA you can find it here. Make this 600 dpi and press OK. All scanner dialogs have a preview or pre-scan button. This way you know where the image is placed on your scanner. So first find that button or option and use it. In this case, properly in English is called example, and the Dutch Windows is called forbid. The noise you're now hearing is my scanner. Now we know our image lies, so we can crop the scan area, so we only scan that what we need. Always leave a little room around the image. Do not worry if the image isn't placed straight, this is easily fixed and easy sign. Now all the settings are made, we can press the scan button. Depending on your scanner speed, your computer speed and available memory, scan speed will scan speed, excuse me, will be different. I will now pause the video so you can uh, don't have to look at a blank screen for about two minutes. I have a pretty old scanner connected. 
After a while, the scanned image will appear in EasySign as a bitmap. First thing we do is straighten the bitmap, looking at our image for something that should be horizontal or vertical but isn't. If everything is as it should be, we don't need to do so. But, of course, I've placed the image crooked on purpose, so just to show you what you can do to correct this. Make sure that the bitmap is selected and choose the Scale and Measure tool from the toolbox or press Ctrl plus M. Now click and drag along a region in the bitmap that should be horizontal or vertical. So click, I'll choose this point, start dragging until you find the point which should be vertical or horizontal, and then release the mouse. A dialog will appear after you release the mouse button. Under Angle, change the angle. If you got some value that lies around 0, enter 0. If you got the value that lies around 90, then enter 90, and so on. So, I got 73.49, I make it 90, and press Apply. The bitmap is now rotated, but the image on the bitmap now lies straight. The next thing I usually do is, uh, with black and white images, is make a duplicate so that after the scan is done, <coughs> pardon me, the vectorization is done, I can see if uh, it is accurate enough. Just follow what I do. First I change it again to selection, then press the numerical plus key on your keyboard. We now have a duplicate exactly on the original. With the copy still selected, click with the right mouse button on a light grey color. Yes, you can color black and white images just as you would a vector object. Now press Shift plus page, page down to move the copy to the back. Shift, page down. We don't need it until we are done scan, uh, vectorizing. I keep mixing up those two. Now select the original bitmap, which is easy because it lies on top. Then select the menu Bitmap Vectorization. Bitmap Vectorization. Make sure that Type Vectorization is set to Contour Line. We want to plot the end result. The option Center Line is commonly used for engraving purposes. The dust filter to High. If there are a lot of specs on the scan, this option will filter them out. Set the preset to user defined. This will make the sliders below active, so we can make our own settings. The first slider is for the number of nodes. If you drag it all the way to the left, you will get few nodes, but less accuracy. If you drag it all the way to the right, you get the best accuracy, but a lot of nodes. Let's try the least possible nodes. So drag the slider to the left and press OK. To see the result in comparison with the original, we have to switch to wireframe. Yes, wireframe. Because in each side it's possible to see bitmaps in wireframe when you want this. So we switch to wireframe. Next, show the bitmap view quality toolbar by selecting this toolbar from the menu View. So, View, Bitmap View Quality. Here you can easily set how you want bitmaps to appear in a wireframe or color world. Probably this will still have the default settings. The first four buttons are for bitmaps in wireframe. So, from the left to right, this is Border, Simple Grayscale, Grayscale, and Original. Press the fourth one, original. Now you can see the light grey copy and the lines of the vectorization object simultaneously. We can close this dialog for now. Let's zoom in a bit. With the number of nodes set to minimum, the vectorization follows the contour of the image loosely, like you can see here for example. Which in some cases is exactly what you need. Now let's try a higher number of nodes. With the vectorization object still selected, select the menu Bitmap Vectorization again. Bitmap 
vectorization. In the dialog, drag the slider all the way to the right and press OK. As you can see, as you can see now, it follows it much more closely than before. Vectorization is now following every pixel of the bitmap as closely as possible. Which again could be exactly what you need. In this case, however, I will set it to medium. Let's open the vectorization dialog again. Bitmaps, vectorization. I'll drag it uh, about 50. The next options I will handle a little bit faster, otherwise this video would become way too long. Sharpen corners. A high value for this option is only advised when you have a picture with lots of sharp corners in it. When you have an average hand like drawing like this, it's best to keep this value fairly low. Straighten curves. A high value is only necessary when a picture has more straight curves than bent ones. With an average hand drawing like this, it's best to completely ignore this option by dragging the slider all the way to the left. Horizontal vertical filter. If you have a picture with lots of 90 degree horizontal and vertical lines, you should use this one with a high value. With an average hand drawing, hand like drawing, just put the slider all the way to the left. Now we've made all the necessary settings, just press OK. So now I want to make some adjustments where the lines of the vectorization not quite follow the original as I want to. How is this done? If you look at the status bar, you can see that a vectorization is selected. This is, a, uh, this is why I could edit the vectorization settings even after pressing OK in the dialog. As long as this is set to a vectorization object, you can edit the vectorization settings. But now I want to edit the nodes. For this, I have to convert the object to Edible Tool Curves. Just press Ctrl plus Q, or press this button. Now keep your eyes on the status bar. If it read reads that it has two or more objects selected, there were parts in the original where a white space was completely enclosed by a black space, or vice versa. But I want to edit the vectorization object as one editable curve. Just press Ctrl plus L to combine the selected objects. Now it will read Curve on main layer in the status bar. If the color is white, as you can see on the far right of the status bar, click once with the left mouse button on the black icon of a color palette. A white object on a white word sheet background will not be visible. In this case it is already black, so we can leave it. The original bitmap is still behind the vectorized one, so we can easily see where we have to adjust the curves a bit. I won't bother you with this, you already know how to adjust curves. And if you don't, just watch one of the other tips and tricks. EasyTrain does a pretty good job on minimizing the number of points that are necessary, points, nodes is a better word, to make up the shape, but if there are too many nodes to your liking, you can always reduce them automatically by selecting the menu Arrange Optimize Shape. You can see how Optimize Shape is used by viewing the tip and trick about compatibility. Actually, we are done. You can now scale the vectorization to any desired uh, size, incorporate it in your design, or just press plot to plot the illustration as it now is. I hope you have enjoyed this tip and that, I will be, and that it will be of use to you.